Well, I did a dumb and I completely broke my CNC plasma table. I'll show you what I did and how you can avoid the same fate. And also we're gonna fix it. Welcome back to Cloud42, I'm James. You may have seen the previous videos where I made this very snazzy monitor mount for my CNC plasma table, but in so doing, I made a simple mistake and completely broke the torch height control. Not to worry, we're gonna fix it, and all we need is 63 cents worth of plastic. If you have one of these plasma tables, then you know that the electronics box is mounted to the frame using a plastic spacer. There's a plastic spacer in there, and then there are plastic uh, washers with a shoulder on them for the screws that mount this to the table leg. And the reason for that is to keep the electronics isolated from the plasma table. And the reason that matters is because the tray and the slats, and in fact, the whole frame of the plasma table is a part of the plasma cutter circuit. The ground or the work clamp, which is actually the positive side, uh, from the plasma table actually connects to the underside of the tray that contains the slats. So if you have an electrical connection between this box and the frame of the table, it will interfere with the electronics because the actual cutting current that's flowing from the plasma cutter will then be connected, at least the positive side of it will be connected to the electronics ground. And so they've gone to great lengths to keep that separate. And part of the reason why that matters is because the torch height control is actually a, um, a voltage divider that's taking the plasma cutting voltage, dividing that down, and then connecting it into an analog input on the electronics so that it can read the voltage of the arc. And that's what it uses for the torch height control. And in my case, after I mounted the monitor onto the plasma table, everything appeared to be working great, and then when I went to do a real project, I discovered that the torch height control wasn't working at all. In fact, it was reading zero volts. So I went through all of the troubleshooting, and what I discovered is that I had inadvertently connected the electronics box to the plasma table. So somehow, we got a connection from the ground on this box to the table and it has something to do with the monitor. And I ultimately tracked it down to this USB cable. So this USB cable is connected to this box, connected to the ground, and then it goes across to the computer. The USB cable from the electronics control box comes over underneath the table up through the wire duct and it connects to the computer on the back side of this monitor. And then there are cables that connect from the computer to the monitor itself. There's an HDMI cable, an audio cable, and a USB cable for the touchscreen. And all of those cables have grounds, so the ground of the electronics box is connected to the ground of the monitor. Then the monitor is bolted to this metal post, and this metal post is bolted to the plasma table. So the ground of the box is ultimately connected to the plasma table through this post. Now, we did 3D print a plastic sleeve to go into the leg here that would isolate this post from the leg and from the rest of the table, except that these bolts go through it and these bolts have aluminum sleeves around them and those aluminum sleeves are making contact with both the leg and the post and that is the source of our issue. That's where the ground from the electronics, including the monitor, is getting connected to the table. And we can see that very simply again with the uh, ohmmeter here and we can just measure from this post to these bolts and you can see that we have continuity, and of course that connects through to the tray. Now we don't know for sure that it's going just through this, but we can isolate this and test again, and we can tell if that truly is the problem. And to do that isolation, I 3D printed some replacement sleeves out of uh, this same PETG carbon fiber material that we used to 3D print the plug to mount the post into the table leg. Now this material is probably overkill. Um, it is gonna be very durable in this application and I've already used it elsewhere in this project and I had it on hand. And while this material is pretty expensive, these are very small parts and we're looking here at about 63 cents worth of material. So let me get these installed in the leg and let's see if it solves our problem.
Okay, so now we've got the plastic sleeves in, in place of these aluminum ones. And let's see if the connection is broken. And sure enough, that has completely solved the problem. Now, as it turns out, that USB cable is not the only way that the electronics box was connected to the monitor. They both have uh, grounded cables and they both come back to a plug strip. So there's a grounded IEC cable coming from the electronics box to this plug strip. And then there's a grounded IEC cable that goes to the monitor. So the ground of the box was connected to the ground of the monitor through the plug strip anyway. And if you remember correctly in the previous video, I had this plug strip mounted on the inside of this tube with sheet metal screws. And it's a metal plug strip, so it's not double insulated. The case was grounded. And so it wasn't just the ground of the monitor to the table frame through the stand. It was also the ground of the plug strip screwed into the table. So to solve that problem, I just took the plug strip and I actually just mounted it to the plastic lid on the cable tray here. So there's no connection between the plug strip and the table. I also could have just used a plastic plug strip, which actually would have been cheaper and more readily available. I had to special order the metal one because I wanted metal because metal is more better. But it turned out that actually bit me too because I ended up connecting the ground, which I didn't think about being connected to the electronics, to the table. But moving it to the plastic cover of the cable tray here, just put in four M3 screws with nuts and washers and a nylon lock nuts so it won't vibrate loose. That solved that problem and we should be completely isolated now. Now that we've got all of the grounds that we know about disconnected from the table, let's check and see if that has solved the issue. It's from the electrical box to the table. We have an open circuit. So we do finally have this completely isolated. And while I don't have anything set up or any water in the table right now to do a test cut, I can confirm that that did actually solve the problem. So what happened here, I made a simple mistake and a simple oversight and I did not think about the fact that I was actually connecting the ground of the computer to the table, which the designers of this table have taken so much effort to keep isolated. It's just a dumb mistake and it's a simple thing. And honestly, I'm really glad that the only thing that happened was that the torch height control was reading zero voltage. And so the software detected that. And as soon as the torch started, it didn't see the voltage rise and it just shut down and powered off. And I'm very pleased, maybe a little bit surprised, but definitely pleased that nothing got damaged. And once I got things isolated again, everything seems to be working. Well, that's lesson learned and uh, hopefully uh, you can avoid my mistake or if you do encounter a mistake similar to this, you'll know what to do to track it down and try to solve it. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe to the channel and leave me a comment. I'd like to know what you think. What kind of things have you screwed up trying to be clever? Thank you for watching.